morning. It is Thursday, August 17th. Thanks so much for joining us for this edition of Up to the Minute. I am Sharday Campbell. I serve as the Enrollment Communications Manager here at Houston Community College. Apologizing in advance if you hear the sounds of the city, and that's the sirens in the background. But pleased to be here today and joined by my co-host, Montrose Cunningham, who's the Northwest Community, HCC Northwest Community Outreach Coordinator. Good morning, Montrose. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? It's been a while since since we've been able to do this together. Yes, yes, it has been. So I'm I'm glad to glad to be joining you today. I like your background and it's real. So yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't even think I can create this aesthetic on my own. <laughs> it, it had to already exist. I could just add a little pop of color to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it works. It works. <laughs> Well, let's tell everyone if they are watching this on our playback or want to look in the future everywhere they can find us in a minute. All right. Well, we are live on the Houston Community College District Facebook page, not the HCC page and YouTube. We're also on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter and LinkedIn and on HCC TV at noon, 5 and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. All right. Thank you for that. Well, today is Thursday, which means it's Thursday Family Fun Day here on the show. And Montrose will be asking our guests, is it too late to be or not to be? That'll make sense when you find out where our guests are from today. Joining the show will be Corey Stevenson, the Director of Outreach and Membership for Houston Shakespeare Festival for, for the University of Houston's College of Arts, as well as Patrick Fretwell, who's an actor in the Houston Shakespeare's Festival. Welcome to the show, Corey and Patrick. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. All right. You and Montrose, who has a deep appreciation for the arts, are going to have a great conversation just in a second. But first, we are, we could, we could just see fall right around fall, our fall semester right around the corner. So we want to kick things off as classes begin here with our local school districts. We'll talk to a student to teach that teaches us you're never too old to go back to school. Welcoming to the show is Marin Jess Jensen, who's a dental assisting graduate, as well as a dental hygiene student at HCC Coleman College of Health Science. Welcome to the show, Maureen. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning. Good morning. And did I did I correctly guess the phonetics <laughs> of, of yes. your name is Marie? Yes. All right. <laughs> Wanted to just make sense. Well, of course, as I mentioned, it's back to school time. And, you know, that means a lot of different things for a lot of different people. It really depends on where you are in life. Does it mean you're coming back? Is it this, is this starting over? Is it a continuation of what you are doing? So we're always so happy to hear just that, that perspective from our students. But as a mother of three in school and a successful Coleman student yourself, I, I would assume that you are, you, you're getting your kids ready, you're getting yourself ready. That brings some extra stress. And I think, you know, what would be appropriate is for our students to really hear from another student in their same situation. So what are you going through and how are you prepare for the semester? Uh, definitely just having to figure out a routine during the week that works for my family um, and making sure we stick to it so that it doesn't get too chaotic. Uh, having like a good support system too and making sure you have people in your corner, you need like a backup plan and then another backup plan if that doesn't work out. Um, so just like a lot of planning and structure to make it function. All right, well, let me ask you this. So in, in, in my household growing up, that don't that week or two leading into you starting back to school, you had to practice going to sleep. Yes. <laughs> you had to, you had to <laughs> That's practice a big going one. to sleep. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So you're, so you're doing that, making sure everybody is getting up on time. I'm sure that is a part of your routine. Well, let's let's um let's rewind back when you made the decision to to return to school. Tell us why you decided to enroll at Coleman College and and, and in the degree that you're pursuing. Uh, I wanted to go back to school because I originally wanted to do dental hygiene when I was younger and um, had to stop going to school because I became a mom 
And now that the kids are older and they're in school themselves, they have somewhere to be during the day, which makes it easier for me to pursue my own dreams. So um, in 2021, I decided to get with an advisor and learn more about the programs that HCC offers. And really that dream of hygiene never went away. So I decided to go into dental assisting first uh, just because I knew hygiene was pretty competitive just to get my feet in the water. And I had so much fun and decided to enroll for hygiene and got in. Um, but yeah, just a lot of, a lot of planning. Um, and even with my family having discuss, having to discuss what it's going to look like if I go back, how are we going to make it work? Uh, how are we going to share like responsibilities around the house and making sure the kids were taken care of? So a lot of that kind of stuff had to go into me returning a lot of practice, a lot of trial and error to find a thing that worked for us. Yeah. And, you know, I think what's so interesting about our health science uh, track in a lot of areas, there, there are these opportunities to get an, a, an, a credential, a quick credential, build on that uh, while you were still learning. So that sounds like what you were doing. And, you know, one thing that you have, even though you said you had to stop because you needed to focus on motherhood, one thing you do have a leg up on a lot of students is you appear to have a lot of clarity around what it is that you want to do. So why why were you so clear about you wanting to do dental assisting? Uh, my mom was actually a dentist. Uh, she's from the Philippines, so she studied there. And uh, I remember growing up, um, she had her kit in our bathroom with all her scalers and dental mirrors and everything. And as a kid, I used to kind of go through them and tinker with them. And so that's kind of where I got interested in it. And I did dental assisting because I wanted to make totally sure that it was a field I would really enjoy. And doing uh, the clinical hours, that's when I kind of really got passionate about it. It was really fun working with the patients and getting to experience that past pace. So that's when I decided, you know what? Yeah, this is definitely for me. I want to go all the way with hygiene and push myself. You know, I'd say I'm not going to make this about me, but I will share a personal story because <laughs> we're having a conversation, right? And it's, it's so funny because parents never know what seed, and I'm sure you're going to see this with your kids too, what seed they're planting. Mm -hmm. And my mom used to have me read her press releases at like five. <laughs> and here I am writing press releases <laughs> professionally. So I just, I love that story that it really, that, that seed was planted with your mom and you didn't give up on it. You had some detours, but you came right back to that center of what you know you had clarity around. And we're so happy you chose HCC to do so. So this being your second time back or, or at HCC or your second program at HCC, what do you, what do you think, are the, have been the best parts of your college experience? Uh, Coleman is really special. And I think, at least from my experience with assisting, it's a really good program. And my professors and my director were just so supportive of my goals. And they really helped me like keep my eye on the prize and just great mentors. Um, they were always cheering for my success. Anytime I got, you know, something special happened or even when I was struggling, they were there for me. And um, I think the nice thing about Coleman, you're in a program and you get that kind of personalized attention. Uh, you have like, you know, your cohort and your professors and directors, they're all there like really focusing on you and helping you grow as a person and a student. And uh, they just did such a great job. And I even went on to take the national board for assisting and I passed and I'll tell you, I cried in my car. It was the hardest test ever, <laughs> but I, the first person I text was my director and I told her, thank you so much. Like if it weren't for y'all this, I couldn't have done this exam. I couldn't have passed and just y'all worked so hard that past year to make sure like I knew what I was doing and I was prepared and I was just so grateful for, for their help and, and, in that i i love i love to hear that now i work i work in enrollment and we help you get into a class but that experience what what you truly remember often happens in the classroom so let, i, I want to do some real what's the director's name that you text oh k jukes yeah okay i wanted to make sure she got a little shout out because that is yes. such a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful She's wonderful. Story. 
Yeah. Yes, and congratulations great. on on passing that exam. And I'm sure even after that, as you continue your pursuit, what motivates you to uh you, you still have to have those sources of motivation? What motivates you to keep going? Uh definitely my children. Um, I feel like I'm setting a good example. Uh, they see me studying and working hard at night when I get home from class. And I've even seen an improvement in their own study skills. They seem more motivated for school. And I'm a big believer that you can't really ask your children to, to do anything that you haven't done. It's harder to because they're like, well, she didn't do it. And so for me, I, I really like for my children to pursue college education and so I'm like, well, I have to set the example. Like I have to model that if I'm going to ask them to uh, preserve or pursue, pursue that in their own future. So that's a big one. And then just um, being able to get into a career that I really love and I'm passionate about. And um, then just the financial support that I can provide for my kids that I couldn't before. So I, I the will. future. <laughs> I love that. And as we wrap out, if you could just give one tip to students who are starting a semester, even if it's to these students who are parents, what, what would you tell them? Definitely, like, get your tribe involved. So whether that be coworkers or family and friends, don't be afraid to tell people what you're doing and to ask for help, because I've definitely had to ask for help many times. You'd be surprised how many people out there want to help and are willing. And unless you put it out there, you don't know you have that support in your corner. So don't be afraid, afraid to share what's going on, um, ask for help. Um, because people will come, like you will get the support you need. It's out there. Such an important tip. And if you're just tuning in and hearing all these gems being dropped, we've been talking to Maureen Jensen, who's a dental assisting graduate and a dental current dental hygiene student who will be actively pursuing her goals this fall at HCC Coleman College of Health Sciences. We'll have information posted after the show about our health science programs. Thanks so much for joining us, Maureen. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Take care. Good luck this semester. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, Montrose, I'm going to kick it over to you, shifting from health sciences to the arts. All right. Uh, which I'm so glad you all gave me this one. Sounds really uh, exciting. We're moving on to Corey Stevenson, Director of Outreach and Membership, and Patrick Fretwell, an actor, both with the Houston Shakespeare Festival at the University of Houston's College of the Arts and our Thursday virtual family fun day guests. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Yeah, can't complain. All right. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, let's begin. Us. Yeah, let's begin with the history of the Houston Shakespeare Festival. So uh, the Houston Shakespeare Festival is the professional arm of the University of Houston School of Theater and Dance. And in 1975, Dr. Sidney Berger, um, um, Doc Berger, as he was often referred to, created the festival um, out in that summer. And, and it's just an ongoing tradition. We've become sort of like um, the heart of that summer Shakespeare experience uh, out at Miller Outdoor Theater. And we'll serve um, anywhere from 10 to 25,000 people between online and uh, online streaming and in the park over the course of the summer. So it's become a tradition both for the city and for our um, artists. Patrick has come up through our graduate acting program and is a graduate uh, and worked on the stage out at Miller. It's a great, a great opportunity for our students. Yeah. Wow, great. So, um, I, you know, and uh, I'm from Dallas, but when I uh, moved to Houston, I still have not had a chance to see the Shakespeare Festival. But, uh, you know, I, I plan to get out there because uh, I used to go to Shakespeare in the Park in Dallas. So uh, my first gig, my first professional gig was with Shakespeare Dallas. I grew up in Dallas. So, yeah, really? OK, yes, we'll yes, have to yes, talk yes. after the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, speaking of the history, you lost a longtime director recently. Uh, where did he go and, and who replaced him? Dr. Shimko had been with the program for uh, at the School of Theater and Dance for, I think, 16 years. But the director of the school and uh, the head of 
Houston Shakespeare Festival for eight seasons. Mm. And he he got a magnificent officer offer from uh, the University of Vermont, where he's from, near his mom. And, you know, mm. we're just like, oh. So he, he has taken that job and literally closed the festival on the 5th, um, spent a week with us uh, and uh, loaded up the car with his uh, little baby and went off to, to Vermont literally on Friday. So uh, Jim Johnson will be joining us uh, as the interim uh, executive director of the festival as we do a national search. But Jim is a very familiar face. Um, just prior to Dr. Shimko, he was the director of the festival for three seasons. So uh, he, he's familiar with our program. He's going to be an interim as we do a big national search. Okay. Now, yeah. now Patrick, um, you you came up through the ranks. So mm -hmm. how, how does it feel, you know, doing these um, uh, events at Miller, you know, going from at, in college to uh, something like that? Sure. Uh, I, it's wonderful uh, in one word. Um, but yeah, I, I feel I felt well equipped with the training I got here uh, to get onto a space that's that that's that it that is that big um, for everyone that's been out to know like it's, you know, it's, it's a huge space. Like it just seems like people go on for miles and miles. Um, mm -hmm. And part of our training we do here is we work with uh, in a setting like that, like we'll go outside sometimes and do mm -hmm. uh, pieces as if we were doing them for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously that first day on the stage, uh, this is my second, this is my second season doing it, but that first day going on the stage and just seeing the hill and like, just, it, it, it starts to feel real, like, wow, this is massive. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we do a lot of Shakespeare training here as well. So, um, and I got to play Claudio this summer, which was a, a dream role of mine for much ado. So it's oh, wow. a wonderful experience overall and just great people I got to work with every single day. So oh, great. That's wonderful. So now at the beginning we kind of made this little joke about to be or not to be uh and evidently it, it's uh the season is over so catching shows is not to be right now but <laughs> uh, tell us a little closed. bit about the past offerings that the you've had in the seasons we just closed miller continues all through the fall but our season just closed correct <laughs> But okay. we're looking forward to our 50th season coming up next. It's a milestone next year. Um, we, we usually have a series of titles that we propose to Miller, and we're in the process of doing that now, so shh, we don't know what we're doing yet. Right. Um, but but our, our proposal's got some biggies in there, so watch out. We'll come back and tell you what we're doing for next season <laughs> for okay. our 50th. We're going to have a blowout with lots of fun activities besides just the shows. All right. And and speaking of besides just the shows, what other outreach activities do you offer now? As a matter of fact, I'm going to be jetting off right after this interview. Um, I do workshops. I, I do workshops out at um, the Houston Public Library through their Camp Stream program. Mm -hmm. um, I have I will teach between uh, 200 to 400 students over any given summer um, through that program. Plus, we offer um, lectures, bard talks um, that happen out of the park nightly. Um, next year, we'll have our cat camp will be back. And uh, that's a cougar actor training camp that is for high school students in which some of our festival artists will come and, and give lectures and trainings. And we also offer, as the School of Theater and Dance, in partnership with Houston Shakespeare Festival, um, the um, Texas Fight Intensive. And it occurs at UH Downtown. Have you participated in that? I'll be working on it this year. Uh, yep. <laughs> do you want to talk about the Fight Intensive? That's coming up very soon. Yeah, sure. It's a, a yearly uh event that happens where we bring in fight directors from all over the country, uh, certify with the Society of American Fight Directors. And it's an opportunity for people to take classes and just learn about all sorts of stage combat. So everything from like your fake punches and kicks to uh, working with swords. Uh, it's, it's a great time. It's a great way just to get to kick off the academic school year. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. We always do it over Labor Day weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So uh, there's still time to sign up if you haven't um, and learn how to to do stage combat just like the actors in the Houston Shakespeare Festival. Yes, because that's that's important. I have a cousin who is in is in New York now working as an actor and 
he was talking about his classes where you actually learned how to do that. And, mm-hmm. you know, you're not just haphazardly throwing punches. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, all planned. Yeah. it's all planned. <laughs> it's all, it's like choreography for dance, mm-hmm. except it is a very, very physical. So, yep. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you two. And, and I just have to, this very last thing, I just have to say, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of trouble. See, that's, you know, if you need Patrick, if you need a uh, an understudy. <laughs> <laughs> I better watch out. I was a, no, 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 I, I, I'll work under you. I was a theater major for my first okay. year. So. <laughs> we have auditions in February. Come on. Come oh, on. I'll be ready. I'll be ready. Well, thank you both so much um, to uh, Corey Stevenson, Director of Outreach and Membership, and Patrick Fretwell, both at the Houston Shakespeare Festival. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll be looking forward to the next season. Look forward to seeing you out at the park next year. All right. Okay. Not you, not you speaking fluent Shakespeare. Hey, huh? you know, you just never know. <laughs> I don't. I feel like I learned something new every time <laughs> about you. <laughs> Well, let's kick things off with a now. Now, do you want to announce any other special talents before we go into like real announcements? No, I'm gonna save that for the next time we're on on together. Uh, okay, just just do a little drip campaign. Just just bring it <laughs> a little piece at a time. All right, we're gonna kick things off with our announcement first. Announcements first up, we have our faculty exhibition out of longing at our HCC Central Campus. It's inspired by mythical creatures and religious symbolism. The artist's inspiration is man's need to personify his wishes for what does not exist. Uh, You can check out this exhibition on Monday, August 21st through November 3rd. So you have time. It'll be at our HCC Central Fine Arts Gallery and it is free. So be sure to check the post after the show for details about how to check it out. All right. Uh, And also consider the online option and register today with the fall semester starting next week. I can't believe it. HCC says students should consider the convenient online options for their classes. So uh, classes begin Monday, August 21st, and you can check out our post after the show for the link to register. All right. And with fall starting, that means the clock is winding down about your options on how you are going to cover the cost. Uh, The semester of fall begins September, uh, September, August 21st. But I just want to give a reminder that we have multiple start dates throughout the entire semester. Our longest uh, semester session is 16 weeks, which begins on August 21st. And if you are looking to get your FAFSA application and get those steps taken to secure your financial aid for school, now the time time is urgent. So be sure to visit our HCC website to get started on the path to covering the cost to reach your goals in school. Details will be posted after the show. All right. And the fall food food trailer at HTC with the Houston Food Bank, free groceries are available for HCC students, faculty and staff through the Community Health Market Trailer and Houston Food Bank. Uh, This is offered at HCC campuses. No pre-registration is needed, uh, but go early before items run out. And that's from uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Wednesday, August 23rd, HCC Missouri City Campus. And that's the uh, Community Health Market trailer. And you can check out the post after the show for information to register. Yes. And as we're preparing for fall, just like every semester, safety is always top of mind for a lot of students. And our series, Coffee with a Cop, will be kicking off at at our Northline campus with our HCC Police Department, who will meet with students, enjoy a cup of coffee. Our officers handle a lot more than you would ever think at HCC, from from parking to ensuring you feel safe to understanding what options you have for them to support you all while on campus. So be sure to check it out. It'll be 8.30 to 11 a.m. Wednesday, August 23rd at our HCC Northline campus. Details will be posted after the show. Yes, and fall registration remains open. Uh, so uh, classes begin next week on Monday. Uh, you can register for online anytime online on a schedule, uh, hybrid classes, in-person classes, and the hybrid lab. And to learn more about HCC programs and the start dates and options uh, to cover costs, go to hccs.edu apply. All right, coming up as an appropriate 
a follow up to our great conversation that Montrose had with uh, in the arts. We'll have Film Friday, which will feature one of our own history professors who has done a piece about Black Rodeo Cowboys. I'm sure I'm going to have to tune in for that one. Always mm -hmm. that intersection of history and film is always interesting to me. And we'll also spotlight HCC's translation and interpretation program. Thanks right. so much for joining us for this edition of Up to the Minute. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye.